We often talk about how many people the Border Patrol apprehended last year, how many people are undocumented in the United States. Finding an angle on that public policy issue and putting a human face on it is critical. We spent a long time trying to catch sight of one of the buses dropping out the deportees. They had to go through different types of processing in the United States first. They might go through an immigration court. They might go through a criminal court. If they have money, it might be that they can return home deeper into the interior of Mexico. But often individuals are stuck. They don't have anywhere to go. They might have to sleep on the street. There's a road leading from the border, and along the way is where these aid centers are located. So the individuals who are deported often will eat breakfast at the Commodore Aid Center. A lot of the folks, it seemed like they'd been through this before. They'd been deported multiple times, so they kind of knew what was going on. Other folks looked really bewildered, though. They'd just been through a whirlwind with the Border Patrol. Maybe they'd spent several days trying to cross the border in the first place, so they were dealing with injuries and exhaustion. So we met up with a Red Cross coordinator named Norma Alicia Quijada. She uh, provides medical treatment to migrants recently deported from the United States, as well as individuals making the trek north. You know, a whole lot of the injuries that a medical practitioner sees south of the border is gaping blisters. And we're not talking about like a blister from a pair of roller skates. I mean, they recovered the entire soles of their feet, so it required days and days of treatment. But interestingly, what the Red Cross nurse we interviewed told us was that she was seeing not necessarily an increasing number of injuries from people falling off the border fence, but increasingly intense injuries like fractures, broken legs, and things like that. Because at certain areas of the border, the fence is 15 to 18 feet tall. Uh, we saw one woman who had bandages on both of her feet. One of her ankles gave out while she was trying to cross into the United States through the desert. Her other foot had slipped into a rock crevice. There's a huge graveyard decorated with bows and candles and personal mementos. This graveyard, I discovered later, was where a lot of people often sleep when they've run out of nights at local shelters. And then they have nowhere else to go, so they're sitting in this uh, graveyard by day and sleeping there at night. We talked to an individual in the graveyard and he says nothing basically awaits him back home in Honduras. His family is very, very poor, it's very violent, he's determined to try to find work. And he told us it doesn't matter how many times he's going to get arrested. He's going to try over and over to get into the United States. What we tried to do in the United States is apply criminal justice principles to immigration patterns. Whenever we saw a wristband, we knew that that individual had been processed through a program called Operation Streamline. That's where individuals are criminally prosecuted for violating immigration laws. The problem with that, according to, to the experts we talked to, is that immigration violators aren't motivated by rage and greed, motivated by economic factors, family ties in the United States. It's hard to determine whether or not these deterrence programs that Border Patrol is really interested in are working. So the San Juan Bosco Aid Center provides food and shelter to individuals. They can stay overnight. There's 90 to 100 beds separated into two dormitories for men and women. The shelter's run by a couple that owns a small shoe store in Nogales. I started seeing a lot of individuals who've been recently deported who needed help. On both sides of the border, in Nogales, Arizona, and Nogales, Mexico, to some extent, it's not America and it's not Mexico, it's the border. So a lot of people in these areas are really used to this dynamic, where people are crossing the border a whole lot. There are a lot of stories and books have been written about the narrative of migrants. The phenomenon hasn't stopped in the United States, hasn't stopped in other countries where immigration is an issue, so it continues to be something that needs to be reported on.